Okay, so the the final kind of part of this sort of uh, AQA comp sci exam paper speed run. So we're now on question seven. You can see the questions are increasing in difficulty. We're nearly at the end of section B. Uh, so let's read through this question. The skeleton program is to be changed so the points awarded for winning a round depend on which cards are played. Change the play game subroutine so that three points are ordered when a round is won. If player one wins with a card from the top suit, which has a rank of six or lower. So we're looking for player one winning. So it doesn't matter about player two. We're looking for player one winning with tops. And then we need to check if the rank was six or lower. So get three points. Okay, let's. I think that's the same block of code as we looked at before, which was this, the decide winner of round bit. And we've already got a, uh, a condition that checks if player one wins with the top suit. But what we need to remember is that player one could have the top suit, even though they have an equal suit wins a card, wins with a card from the top suit. Hmm. It's a bit confusing because if you have the same suit, I guess you're not getting top trump, so top trump, so it won't be in this branch. It won't be in this branch. Let's go with it being in this branch, I think, because because of the fact it says it's a bit of a confusingly worded question. It says in all other situations, a half point is still awarded. So I'm taking it to mean that all other situations are these ones. So this is a little bit tricky because this doesn't return the number of points. So let's have a look at what part of code handles the kind of deciding of the number of points. So we've got this bit and we've got the player one wins. So how should we how should we program this? So what we might understand is that as well as when player one wins being coming out of this function, we might add an extra return value, which is this sort of like bonus points, uh, bonus points value. And what I'm going to do in the scope of play game is I'm going to say, uh, if bonus points, what this means is player one points should go up by a further 2.5 because we need to get get it up to three, right? You already get half a point. So we add two and a half. So now we need to decide under what condition should bonus points be something other than, oops, oh, I did not mean to do that. Hopefully I didn't just do that finally, good. Okay, we need to decide now that as well as returning true, we've got bonus points. Is this a straightforward way to do it? Is there an easier way of doing it? Maybe we don't need to think about that because we've still got access to player one rank in this situation. But we don't know. Ah, okay, no, I think maybe it is necessary to do that. I guess this is a trickier question. So let's return this variable called bonus as well as returning the, the whether the player one has one. Oops. So we're going to every time return bonus. In every branch of the conditional statement. And most of the time, this bonus variable will just equal zero. We now need to decide the one time where bonus equals Oh, sorry, it's not a value, is it? It's a how would be best to do this? Oh, let's change it so that bonus points is in fact an integer. And then we just say instead 0 0.5 plus bonus points. I think that would make much more sense. So then we've got bonus points being zero, unless there's um, the case where we've won with, in this particular type, we've won with the tops, 
and that means bonus is 2.5. So in all other cases, we're just going to return a zero. But if player one has won with the top trump suit, then that means we return 2.5. So zero will get added in every circumstance apart from the top trump scenario. OK, let's see. So that the examples, P is tops, player one. Oh, sorry, there was an extra condition we met. We only add the bonus if the card rank is less than six. So let's put that in. If player one rank is less than six, then the bonus is 2.5. Right, right, let's have a look. six or lower what have i done wrong there okay so that condition should be inclusive of six so we need to do less than or equal to so p is p suits tops and player one rings round half point half point only if you match the tops yeah that works a message should be displayed after the points have been awarded, stating how many points have been scored for the round. The message should be either three or half point. Oh, interesting. So they want us to format that in a specific way. Okay. So if I like here, I can just say, if bonus points is zero, do they want us to do that for both players? I guess so. That would make no sense, wouldn't it? It wouldn't make sense to do it for only one player. Okay, let's say if bonus points is equal to zero, then it's the standard situation. A half point, half point for this round. If there's another, if it's the other circumstance, then we need to say three points scored this round. Okay, that should be it. And we should be on to testing. So the testing, we need to play a game with 13. And then we need to enter P. And then we need to play cards for the two players so that player one wins the round using a card with a suit of P and a rank of six or lower. So we want to test, we want to test with a, a va with valid test data to, to prove that the pro part of the program we just designed works. So 13 cards and the suit is going to be P. And we're going to do the next bit and we're going to do the next bit. So we're now at the point where, sorry, let me just resize this so you can actually see. We're now at the point where we press enter to continue and we need to choose a card. So player one needs to choose a card and we need to win. So we need to play a P with less than six. So what's our best less than six P? Well, we've got two of P. So let's type in P2 to choose the card. And now player two needs to lose. So let's look for a losing card in player two. But because trumps is P, we can should just be able to pick anything that's not a P. So let's go for eight of C. So that would be C8. Let's see if our test data works. So we've got the player one, one message, and we've got three points scored this round. Okay, that should suffice. So in this particular program, the test data is now going to be quite complex because there's going you're going to get need to need to have a number of different screenshots to prove that you did everything that they asked. This is something to be aware of. You might have to put in multiple uh, screenshots into your EAD as the questions get longer. So let's put that first one in. 
Uh, I got up to press enter, and then let's do the second one. It's because of this uh, like big amount of white space that is meant to kind of show how you hide hide the cards from each other, which doesn't ever really work in a command line interface based game. A better option would be to clear the screen, but that doesn't work in uh, Python Idle at least. So I guess that's why they've put that. Okay, let's screenshot that and put that in. Making sure all screenshots are legible. You shouldn't have tiny font size. Some helpful shortcuts are home and end if you want to move before and after a screenshot. And now let's just go back to the questions. What do we need to do? We need to get our program source code for the subroutine play game. That's making me wonder if their intention was that we actually put all of the code inside play game. I'm hoping for this, that they'd understand that we've returned bonus points from this. I think because I've chosen to do it like this, I'm going to put in both subroutines. So I'm going to put in the play game code. And because I've made a change to decide winner of round, I'm also going to put in that code. But maybe I'm overcomplicating the answer slightly. All right, I think I'll end this one here.